Hello and welcome to By George from Page to Stage, the podcast that's looking at the development of the Fish and Chip musical. My name is Richard Sykes, I'm the writer, and my regular podcast host, uh, Matt Ogden, isn't here today. We had something different planned, but on Monday, something happened uh, that's had an impact, not on By George, but on one of my other projects. And it highlights one of the major problems with almost every musical's journey from page to stage. So today, I'm excited to announce an entirely new AR platform with a revolutionary new product. And here it is. Hang on, hang on. I thought this was a podcast about musicals. It is. Bear with me. As subscribers will know, one of the projects I'm working on at the moment is set in the metaverse, these virtual hangouts where the rest of the world disappears and avatars of real people, some just floating torsos, hang about in a world imagined by American billionaires. Now, I've got a problem with that vision of the future, and I was writing a musical based on how individuality, creativity, and human interaction could possibly survive in that ecosystem. And then... Introducing Apple Vision Pro. Vision Pro is a new kind of computer that augments reality by seamlessly blending the real world with the digital world. And suddenly Apple did exactly what they've done before and reimagined what the the future looks like. Uh, In turn, they destroyed my story. Uh, There's a dial that allows you to uh, merge physical space and actual reality with a virtual world. So, problem solved. Now, reality isn't replaced. It's just augmented, allowing for individuality, uh, for creativity, and allowing for human interaction. Oh, bugger. Anyway, Apple's done this sort of thing before. Uh, Steve Jobs, Apple's co-founder, was convinced that genius was when art and technology fused at exactly the right moment. And this led to the iMac, the iPod, and the iPhone. And uh, none were inherently new technologies. Uh, They just beautifully designed them and uh, eventually they fit in with people's lives. Uh, They were overpriced and indulgent to start off with. Oh yeah, but the the price has dropped and the the market sort of played catch up a bit. Uh, The products showed how it should be done and they all followed suit. So um, instead of things like beige box PCs and uh, the Zune and and clam-shaped personal digital assistants, Um, Apple sat back, designed the future, and that's exactly what they did on Monday. So now, uh, a musical about conflicting metaverses has lost one of the big things that that was going for it. Relevance. So, with my metamusical requiring a radical rethink now, uh, my mind went back to uh, the original versions of the Chip Shop musical by George and how relevant it is today. So, here it is. The earliest version of By George that I've got. Um, The first few versions were handwritten on cruise ships and clearly didn't survive the end of contract maximum luggage allowance cull. So um, we land on this, and it's from 2004. So a full four years after the initial idea, uh, following the success of Curtains. It's a very thin treatment. It's just about 2,600 words. And by comparison, the current by George script weighs in at 26,000. Now I've reread it, and it made me laugh uh, in good and bad ways. But the most striking thing is how irrelevant it is. Um, There are gags in there that have George ogling boobs and um, rubbishing newspaper bias and uh, referencing deal or no deal. Um, Like this. Okay, so this is a section from the original script. It's not it anymore, but uh, this is George who says this. Everyone who's anyone's got an iPod, a laptop, and a DVD player. I don't know what they are or what they do, but I know I don't need them. Those hand-free mobile phones, people shouting at no one in the street. 
You can't tell if they're calling someone or if they're caring the community. And those witless chavs on late night phoning game shows begging me to ring them up and tell them how many sides there are in a triangle. Yeah, some of it looks okay on the page, but it, it probably struggled to make it to the stage. Um, there's some more lines. Uh, yeah, there's some more lines here. There's a married couple. Husband's dyslexic and they've got this sex manual. She's lying there waiting and he's looking for the vinegar. Take a moment. So in that, there's an issue of tone. I mean, George comes across as openly racist, homophobic, and it really actually makes me proud uh, that we're not relying on that trope now. But there's an unevenness um, to the level of the jokes too. Uh, so yeah, here's another one. Um, he says, I can remember the simple pleasures. Sitting with my family in the living room, watching the box in the corner with a small grey face staring back at us. We should have buried Granny sooner. Now, the cast is pretty much in place, but there's not much of the story. And uh, George is definitely the central character, which he no longer is. It's now Pauline. And um, it's called Wibbits, which, of course, it's now by George. A few of the songs remain. My England and I still here. My Crazy Star, uh, Pump It Out, uh, Mr. Wonderful. They're, they're all in here somewhere and they survived the rewrites. But there are 10 other songs in here that have gone completely, uh, including uh, Easy Way Out, um, The Best Things in Life Are Free and the subtly named Drop Everything. It's about as subtle as it sounds. So Sam, George's son, uh, had a girlfriend in this version and um, it was, she was absolutely vital to the plot. And uh, there was, uh, it, it, it took place over four seasons, over a full span of a year. That, that was the device that, uh, that I used to help hold the whole thing together. And it tied in running gags and things like that. That's gone. That doesn't exist anymore. Uh, not a word of this dialogue has made it to the current version. And um, looking at this... It's a very good thing, to be fair. Uh, so, well, what's changed? Well, amongst other things, um, I think I became aware of the butterfly effect of casual racism and sexism and the, the dripping acceptance of bullying. Well, a, a racist, sexist, fascist bully was elected leader of the free world, for God's sake. Uh, Me Too and Brexit happened, and old institutions looked even more ridiculous and flawed uh, than they did at the time. Uh, some things haven't changed in the 20 years since this treatment, but it's um, gradually become more outdated, and the new version feels more mature as a consequence. Uh, now, since Matt and I started doing these podcasts, I've been looking at how George developed. So, as this is recorded with rehearsals about to start in earnest, let's take a look back at the development story so far. Lovely stuff. So, first things first, By George, what's it about? By George is set in a Yorkshire chip shop. It's, it's, a, it's a musical that no one has ever seen before. And it's an idea that came to me uh, just after I'd finished my previous musical, which is now going on 23 years ago that we did at the Lawrence Batley Theatre. And uh, we were going to do it the year after, and we've decided that this is the year to do it. It's the Kirkley's uh, Year of Music in 2023. What was the reasoning behind setting it, firstly, in a fish and chip shop, and then secondly, why in Yorkshire? It didn't start out that way. This musical has been through so much over the past 20, 23 years. It's changed from what I originally intended it to be to what it is now. It's changed position, it's changed location. And it's had to because it's more relevant these days. Mm. Chip shops are dying. You know, that the price of oil and the price of the cost of running these things is running them into the ground. So it, it's a real rallying cry for, for chip shops everywhere, which I've loved since I was a kid. And so uh, it's, it's also got a, a lot more female empowerment and, and agency in it. So uh, these things had to change because times change. And so musicals have to stay relevant with it. So how the hell did you manage to edit something that Rich wrote into something less smutty than the last musical and something that could actually go on the stage in 2023? It's, it's been difficult, Matt, that's all I can say. It's been really difficult. The first version of By George, which was Wibbits. Wibbits. 
<laughs> was put forward and we started looking at that and then everything kind of stopped for a very long time. I took a hiatus from musical totally mm. um, and, and went uh, on a cruise ship and worked on a cruise ship for many, many years. And I, again, you, you, might, you might, might feel the same. I, I have a limited amount of creativity to my day. Mm. If, I, if I'm feeling creative, then I can do something creative. But if I'm not feeling creative, forget it. Yeah. And, and um, often creativity uh, ha has a finite amount for me. So if I'm working on a cruise ship and I'm putting a lot of effort into doing the, doing the shows there and being creative with games and things like that, I was a cruise director, so that's, that's all I effectively did. It saps your creativity and you're, you're channeling it towards the ship yeah. rather than to what I wanted to channel it into, which was my musical. And so when I gave up the ships, I was able to come back and do that. It was legitimately why I, I stopped doing, uh, doing uh, any work on ships at all. I retired when I was 42 in order to, to come back and actually do some writing. Yeah. But this, this one's been, like you said, this one's been a very different process. Mm. A, because I think we learned so much from the first time round. Mm. Um, and we, it started differently as well, because mm. I think... I've looked at it over the years a number of times, and then I think the last few years has been much more focused. Um, uh, for me, the pandemic did that. Mm. It allowed us to sort of stop everything and say, right, what do we actually want this to be? And um, one, of, one, of the, one of the guys that came to, to do the read-through uh, pointed out, once he'd read it through, he said, oh, it's really good fun, isn't it? Richard said that, yeah, the original yeah. guy. And uh, he said, it's fun. And that's exactly what it should have been from the off. Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't. I was trying to get a political message through. Because during that, this 20-year period, of course, we've had Brexit. We've had a, a real political upheaval in the country. And that always filters into your writing. If you're writing from an honest point of view, you have to reflect what's happening. It's got to be relevant yeah. to society. And so Brexit formed a, formed a pillar of what, what the musical eventually became. It isn't that anymore. Mm. We're kind of through Brexit. Uh, nobody wants to know about Brexit. Everyone's over Brexit. And, and there was just no way that it was going to come through in a, in, a, in a musical, which was essentially quite silly. Yeah. And so we embraced the silliness. And we got, we've added more jokes and more fast to yeah. it as we've gone through, I think. I think so. I think, I think one of the key moments for me in the whole editing process was... Uh, Richard came to me with one of the earlier versions of the script and I'd looked at it and gone through it and gone through each, um, each act, each phase of the, of the storyline and realised you couldn't stage it. <laughs> it was a That's minor a detail <laughs> and said, Rich, how on earth do you actually think this is going to make it onto a stage? And, he, and it was like, well, I like all these ideas and the ideas were great. I mean, that, would, that wasn't the point. The point was it was going to be difficult to put on a stage. It wasn't impossible, but it was going to be difficult. Mm. And I think one of the biggest decisions we made at the beginning was to simplify the set. Yeah. Simplify the stage, make it static. And so, it, you know, it's now basically in three triangles. And two of those are, are a fixed area and one is uh, can be used as different locations at different yeah, yeah. times. Bit of a no man's land. And once that was in place, that actually made a difference then to yeah. how individual scenes were structured mm. and so that had a huge impact on the overall shape of it I think. It did and it had a real freeing effect because the moment you take uh, take all the staging well how are we going to get that set off how are we going to pull this set on yeah, yeah, and yeah. put it all on one stage suddenly you have the the ability and in, in one scene for instance the action flashes between one location and another mm. And because the, both locations are set on, on the stage, fantastic, it works superbly. Yeah, it's just yeah. a lighting change rather than yeah, having to absolutely. get yeah. the crew to come in and move anything. That's right. right. That's and right. I think it helps from an audience point of view as well. It's, it's so clearly set out. The yeah. storyline and the locations that the storyline happens are so clearly defined mm. that it just made it so much easier. Mm. And I think... So that was kind of one of the early edits, was yeah. sort of taking, well, I don't know if you want to call that an edit or a development, but it, mm. it kind of took the whole thing in a bit of a different direction there. Is the thinking that by solidifying it as a Yorkshire musical that is set in modern times, and by steering away from the political edge, it doesn't really matter when this production that happens, no. in the future it can carry on, it can, it can stay as exactly what it is, which is a 
semi-dysfunctional family. Well, let's call them what they are. A dysfunctional, yeah, dysfunctional family, family yeah. that is a feel-good musical comedy set very much in Yorkshire. It, it doesn't have to feel dated as such. No, that's right. Uh, um, it, it can still be. It can still be relevant. You yeah. can still ha- have have a certain edge to it. But really, if, if it was going to be a political musical, it would be an entirely different animal. Yeah. And it's one of the reasons I think political musicals don't necessarily exist. Musicals take a long time to come to fruition. They yeah. take a long time to, to write, take a long time to perform. Political plays, you can write on the night and you satire can pretty much satire. Away. You could just improv. Uh, you I can like improv, it, yeah. 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 And, and a lot of people do. You look at SNL over in, over in America. Um, uh, and there is, there is a satirical edge to that every single week. That's not the turnaround for musicals. Mm. So uh, I'm not going to say that it's less political. I believe there's still a political undertone uh, to By George. It takes pot shots wherever. But th- that's all they are. It's not all out war. It's just pot shots at things like social media, about nationalism. And all those themes are still in it, but the edges are s- somewhat smoothed. It's interesting to see how, how evolution's happened. And I expect that to happen with George as well. Yeah. Um, but perhaps uh, I, I, I've kind of future-proofed it because I've taken those edges off it. And then you changed the storyline completely. I did. Well, not completely, <laughs> um, but you kind of changed the ending yeah. and, and took out that political element to it yeah. and, and the kind of points that were trying to be proved and made it much more a story of the characters. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then that really brought the script on an awful lot. And then we had to start looking at each individual bit, each individual line, even down to each individual word yeah. sometimes. We've got to find our cast, Matt. And at the moment, we've got to, uh, we've got about a month, as we record this, about a month to go before we have the auditions. Ooh. Yeah, it's a tense time because, <laughs> uh, well, for someone who's, you know, labored over, over this project for a little while, um, it's it's going to be interesting to see how people put their own spin on it. Yeah, I've sent out audition material uh, to people and they've uh, come back and said, well, how do you want this and how do you want that? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I genuinely don't, don't want any input at this point. All I want to do is say, this is the material. Just work with it how you want. For, for this situation, though, it's totally different in that there's... They can listen to the recordings that you've you've given, mm. but it doesn't give them any idea of the kind of characterization that no. they're going to be able to put on their own stamp on, and they've got no idea of, you know, oh well, someone else did it this way. They're literally creating these characters yeah. and bringing them to life. After that the for me is deliberate. When we put together the audition material, I, I gave the gave the people as much as, as much help as I could. Yeah. Um, we we apportioned uh, what sections of the script we were going to learn and uh, and what songs we were going to throw in there. I recorded the songs uh, as a demo mm. to make sure that people knew the notes. Yeah, yeah. But really, that's it. I didn't interpret them, so there's no yeah, yeah. acting involved in, uh, in 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 putting forward the songs. I got a, a good friend, Alicia J. Brady, to come round and record um, some of the songs for the females because it's in a different key. <laughs> so I just it's just as simple as that. The moves look good if you sell a stone, but if you plumb, you better pump it out alone. If she tell me to merengue channel once again, me bits will still be wobbling during news at ten. When I started writing this, Sam would have been my character. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how long ago this is. Look at this now. <laughs> so, um, I look like a bean Fine bag. specimen won't have anything no, said bad about I you. I look like a bin bag full of yoghurt. <laughs> I could never be a stripper. I'm sorry. There's no way that's going to happen. In late 2022, we had two reads through. I can guarantee that the only people that will listen to it is me and Richard. I can't guarantee that because okay. there's a possibility I'm doing a podcast so it may well go on that. Richard, put your top back on. <laughs> and Please. You, and you put your back on. No. Yeah, it's not that kind Oh, it is that kind of show. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Harry. Paddy drops. I think something's fallen in my lap. Smells like it. <laughs> <laughs> not about me. This evening's about Janice. Janet. About Janet, like I said. <laughs> <laughs> End of act one. Thank you, guys. Right. Um, anything to say, Maria? 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> not, not to me, I mean to those guys. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, after the, after the first read-through, we, we were looking at each other throughout the read-through yeah. and saying, oh, I must go. Yeah. The first read-through yeah. was how long? Two hours? Oh, 30, was, was it? was just act one. Yeah, <laughs> it was enormous. And, yeah. um, and it was getting really trodden down, really bogged down in certain things. We literally got to the, the what would be the interval, um, during the, the sort of re first read through with other people, mm. um, and uh, we'd cut two and a half songs. Yeah, <laughs> so, so, so the red pen was straight out. Oh. And just... yes. But it was mutual. Oh, we both said, yeah. oh, "This has to be shorter. This is awful." In mid January 2023, we had a development day with the set marked out on the LBT stage, which had uh, just been painted for the pantomime. Maria and I agreed that. This was the moment that the project stopped being ours and became its own thing with its own momentum. Uh, it wasn't so personal anymore as actors and production team had fed it with their own ideas and that had the added bonus of making it more universal and crucially more relevant. Grab yourself a falling And me to take myself a George The play is the same, the aim, the game It's an ethical look up but it's identical to yours It's you who's breaking up the family Not me, I'm trying to be a friend She wants release, you want to please It's a fantasy, pretend that you don't want to see it end Just like the old empire Throw petrol on the fire Whatever you desire One low blow can take you higher Together forever Then came the auditions. We are at the famed LBT, Lawrence Batley Theatre here in Huddersfield. And this is where we're going to be rehearsing and doing the auditions and also doing the show. Come and join us, Colin. I believe your dad, Colin, is also auditioning yes. to be in the show. So, Colin, who are you going for? Sam's dad. Ooh. And his name is? Uh, no, he didn't. <laughs> um, I've, I've always kind of like um, been there to help pick the brains of and to chat about. And we've sat drinking tea till early hours of the morning talking about all these different ideas. So it was great to see this coming up. But uh, no, I saw that he'd auditioned and I let him know that I was coming and it was a surprise to him. There were little things that you could kind of... Um, the thing that kind of sprung to mind when I was listening to Pump It Out... Um, which obviously Chloe doesn't sing, but she's obviously she. It, it gave me she's a bit of wind and vibe. Yeah, that's a good know, shout. But not as like you know, she's not shouting that someone's a heifer. She's a bit more <laughs> positive. I found. And what about Marge? What is it about Marge that draws you to to go for that part as well? Oh, she's an absolute bitch, and I love that. <laughs> Is it something that excites you? The idea of kind of um, originating a part? Is it anything you've done before? No, no, never. Yeah. So this will be a first? No, it is, yeah, because your idea is not necessarily going to be anybody else's, is it? So I don't know. It's unknown, isn't it? So, and how are you feeling about the audition? Are you well, nervous? Okay, so <laughs> With the cast in place, there was a cast read-through. <laughs> we don't want to get bored, do we? There's always trots of time to try something fresh. Fresh? <laughs> Smells like a yoghurt's been left at air in cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> and now, here we are. I mean, uh, this podcast is being released uh, the evening before by George's first rehearsal. And in the next podcast, we'll have some major breaking news, which I, unfortunately I'd love to share with you now, but I can't. You're going to have to wait till next time. And uh, footage of the company's tentative steps to take George from page to stage will be featured in the next podcast. So Matt and I were back over the course of the next 16 weeks uh, from here to the premiere. So subscribe to the YouTube channel or wherever you get your podcasts, you can subscribe there too. Uh, there are links in the description below and you can delve deeper on my website at richsykes.com. You can snap up tickets for the musical itself and you can do that at www.thelbt.org. Thank you for listening to the story so far. And thanks to Apple. I'm going to go off now and rethink metaverses. So, till next time, goodbye! Goodbye!